Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to take a look, quick look or skim over on the R2. We're going to talk about some of its pluses, a little bit of its negatives. All right, with that, let's cue the intro and get into this. Okay, as we dig into the R2. So I decided to purchase this machine because I needed to replace the Delta that I had. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the replacement, source the replacement parts that I needed for it. Uh, I was having problems with some of the gear, belt gear parts for the Delta. So I decided to toss it, as you could per se, or just take it apart and put it in a box, basically. Um, with that said, my new route was to replace it with one I didn't have to mess with, one I didn't have to build. So I decided to go with the R2 here. Um, so yeah, so I picked up a Robo 3D R2. As you can see in the background here, I have it, the machine running. I've had it for a couple weeks now. I've been messing with it. Um, so with that said, let's start talking about it a little bit. Now, I've had a few issues with the machine when I first got it. I still have one issue with the machine that they're not really willing to help me replace the part or whatever. It's fine because it's just connected to the power supply. It has a little broken piece that rattles inside, but everything works fine. So I'm not too, too worried about it. Um, so that's one issue I have with the machine. But again, it's very minor. It's not a big deal. Although one thing I, speaking of the power supply, one thing I do wish they did put on the power supply is a switch. The machine, the power supply itself has a fan and it constantly runs. Uh, and you can hear it and you guarantee you, you will notice it. It's a loud fan. So I really would appreciate them if they do in the future, consider putting a switch into these type of things. It'd be kind of convenient. What my solution around that is I purchased a little plug with a switch on top. So I'm not unplugging and plugging in and wearing down the joints. So now that's one issue that I have with the machine. It's kind of a minor gripe, I suppose, but still at the same, we want to minimize how loud these machines can get. And this machine here behind me, as you can tell, is a very loud machine when running. It's a lot louder than the Delta I had. I mean, yeah, I could hear the Delta, but it wasn't as distracting, it wasn't as loud. It's not horrible. And sometimes, depending on the resolution that I'm working with, you'll hear squeaking noises that can be very, very distracting. But that said, this is a very nice print. Yeah, yeah, very nice print. Uh, very nice printer. It does a really good job at prints. Nice quality printing. This, for example, is this little turkey that I decided. I'll show you the footage from the ca inside camera on the machine that, how that looks while it was printing this. And this was printed at a, Point oh, no, point 0.1 layer height and you can hardly see the lines within the wood material itself. Alright, now using, it uses Cura 2.5 and the high resolution on that is they run it at point zero 0.06 which is amazing. You get a nice quality qual oh, excuse me excuse me Itchy notes. Uh, sorry. You get a nice quality print out of that resolution. It can go, and I've tried it, to a 0 0.02 resolution. What I'll do is I'll put up some little images here in a second for you guys to see what I'm talking about. All right. Now, with that said, this printer does not have, it's not flawless. It still has issues, and it's still got problems. One of the problems that I have with the machine, which luckily their support did tell me with this issue, is this piece right here. Unfortunately, this particular component I had to replace. This rod here is bent and it was causing an issue. Um, something, when I looked into it, it was called a Z wobble. And that's a potential problem with this style of machine, which is not as big of a deal as you may sound. There are, it's a very easy fix. It's a little bit of work. It took me a couple hours to fix it. And in fact, one of the videos I plan on doing is 
my dealings with that. All right, now back to the machine itself. I do like this machine a lot more than I did the, with the Delta. It does run a much qu better quality, and I can actually use the whole bed, with the exception of towards the back, maybe like a half inch, because the printhead can't go that far back. Um, another nice feature is I can take the bed and move it to remove the parts and put it back and not have to worry about trying to re-level everything. It, does, it, it handles it all on its own. Another nice feature is the um, material runout sensor because I've had that one, I had a piece of material snap on me and it actually detected the missing material and stopped the print and I was able to fix the problem and resume the print without any issues. All right, those are some of the pos a lot of the positive. I'd say for $1,500, you're getting a great deal but it's not perfect. Again, the seat is a 3D printer. You will have problems, you will have failures. And nice thing is, yeah, you can download Cura 2.5, excuse me, with, which they do have their configuration on Robo's website. But also, if you already own Simplify 3D with their version 4.0, they do have a profile for this machine behind me, and that is something that will be very usable. That is very usable. And the thing that I have printing now, I actually use Simplify 3D to do the slicing in it. Now, the next thing I'm going to quickly go over is the fact that you can access a lot of the information through a web page that's just by typing in the IP address of the machine itself. Yes, the machine is Wi-Fi. Yes, you can transfer things via USB as well, which is great. Um, downfall is there is no SD card slot, which to me, that is not a big deal. That's not a win-lose situation. Matter of fact, I prefer using the USB sticks over that anyways. It's a lot easier to work with. They come with, the machine comes with some basic tools Getting up and running is pretty quick. All you do is level your Z, you set your Z height, and the machine does the rest. It was that simple, which is great. It made my life that much easier. Unfortunately, I did have that one issue with the Z wobble, which I've got since resolved and running. It only took me a few hours and a little bit of time of waiting for the part to come in. Um, technical support. They do have 24-7 technical support, but be forewarned, it is a call center. They are going to be limited as what they can do to help you there. And if, you're, if they can't help you with their issues, they will upgrade it to what's called level 2, which someone from Robo will address. So they're not perfect, but at least there's something. A uh, nice thing is it comes with Autodesk 360 for one year service which is kind of convenient and yeah so overall it's a great machine a lot of fun to play with and there's a lot that you can do with this and it's got a good size not massive but good size print volume all right is the boot that I had printed on the Delta app prior that I designed printed. You can, if you want to go see that, I'll post a link right here. Or, and I might, I'll put it in the description so you guys can go review that one as well. Now, originally on the Delta, I printed this as a two color glow in the dark and a blue peel light, but you can really see the layer lines. This was printed at a 0.2 yeah, 0 0.02 layer height with 100% infill. It came out quite beautifully, if you ask me. Um, 
The only problem I have here with this model is the raft that I use, it fuse to the bay, so the model, so it is extremely difficult to remove. What I think I might have to do to remove the rest of that is use a Dremel to tear away at. So keep that in mind, if you if you get this machine and you're printing a wrap, you want to print a wrap at this resolution, it's going to be really challenging to remove. Not impossible, just challenging. All right. Now with that said, as well, I printed this Xbox One stand, controller stand, which came out amazing. Obviously I did two prints, the white and then I printed the black. Everything else, everything came out as expected and is a, a quality that I'm actually very happy with, with this printer. So overall, as you can see, some of these prints came out pretty decently. Uh, let me grab the, the turkey and we'll take a quick look at that. All right, here's that little paper name tag stamp thing that I printed out for you guys. As you can see, it printed it as nicely as you as nicely as you can expect. Do not need any supports or anything. You can barely see any you can feel the layer lines a little bit, but you can't it's really hard to see. Alright. And with that in conclusion, my thoughts on the printer, it's a great printer. It's not perfect, but it looks nice. It's a little bit too loud. It prints nicely. It's not perfect. There's a few things I'd like to see change. I'd like to see them make a quieter machine, whether they put a little bit more, a little bit of insulation on the inside so the sound's not bouncing around so much. Um, that would be one thing I'd like to see. Second thing, I'd like to see a switch on the power supply. And I'm excited to see when they update their, um, or when they make available a, two, a dual print head kit thing. I'm excited to see that when that has heard. And with that said, let's wrap this up. I'm really enjoying the printer. I am happy with the tools that they have made available. I do have some expectations in the future that I'd like to see adjusted or changed or find better solutions for. Uh, but outside of that, this one has been running all night and it's still going very happily. They have some really great stuff going here and I hope they continue. Alright, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Um, just so you know what the next video will be. So hopefully entice you to subscribe. It will be. I'm starting to create a lamp for a Christmas as a Christmas gift using little lithograph. This one was a test, but that is what will be the future. The next video, I'll be using Fusion 360. We're going for a size something like this per panel. And I'll tell you how the, well these work and how I'll be approaching a lot of the expectations there. I expect that one to be multiple videos, uh, so I expect that. But with that said, they're going to be each video will be focused on little segments that will cover the design process because I'm building this from scratch and. We're going to go from there. All right, with that, subscribe, hit that no bell icon. I'm shooting for Friday videos, but there's no guarantee I'll be able to do one a week. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep this ball rolling. I hope you guys enjoy them. Catch you next time.